week 3 of INST 447 and in this week's lecture we will look at structured data format such as data frame and we will dig deeper on, on how to perform a set of basic analysis on a data frame in using the pandas library in python so let's get started from previous lecture you already know by now that data can be either in a structured format or in an unstructured format and structured format data usually is in the form of a csv file an excel file a sql database or a json file whereas an unstructured file or data is in the format such as images web pages etc and in this lecture we will focus on structured data format called the data frames which is a two-dimensional array with labels the reason it's called two-dimensional is it is because it has rows and columns and columns are called variables and rows are called observations in a data frame you'll shortly see why it's called that and each cell has a data value meaning that each cell contains value for a particular observation and for a particular variable and this example or this screenshot should give you a better understanding of what a data frame will look like a data frame looks very similar to the excel files that you have come across so so far in all the previous courses it has rows it has columns so it's just a representation very similar to your csv files and nothing else as you can see from the red highlighted section these are all the column names in this particular data set so you have eight different columns and these columns are also called as attributes features or characteristics of a particular observation and each row in a data frame is called as an observation because it represents a unique item or a unique instance for example the first row in this data set represent values for Mount Everest so it gives you the height it gives you the range it gives you the first ascent and bunch of other information related to Mount Everest hence the columns are called characteristics or features whereas the rows are called observations and they are unique and the values such as 8848 for height for Mount Everest is called as data so anything that's highlighted here in orange is the data part of the data set that's what you will mainly be manipulating and each data frame also automatically gets assigned index labels as you can see from the slide index labels are nothing but sequential values that are assigned for each row of the data set so if your data set has 100 rows then you will have index labels starting from 0 all the way up to 99 since python starts from 0 your numbering systems in Python also starts from zero for index labels as well. In this example, we have labels starting from zero all the way up to nine, meaning that we have 10 instances or 10 different mountains and we have five features for all these 10 different mountains. The major advantage of index labels in this particular data set is they allow you to extract a particular row. If you're interested in just accessing, let's say rows four all the way up to eight that is from makalu all the way up to nanga parvat so you can specify the index labels of these rows as a range which you will shortly see in the examples in the next set of lectures and you can extract just those four particular rows so index labels are used for slicing the data set into smaller pieces for further analysis if that's what you like to do whereas Index labels are extremely useful in time series data sets because they'll allow you to do a, or plot a time series observations. So you will learn more about the difference of index labels in time series data set versus regular data set. Just know that in regular data set, index labels are used just to extract a specific row or a set of rows. All right. And now that you know how a data frame looks like, we need to next learn how to create a data frame so that you can manipulate and provide any sort of useful analysis. The first way to create a data frame is to read from a file. So for instance, you have a CSV file or an Excel file given to you by your client or you get it from the web, etc. 
and you can read the CSV file using the read underscore CSV function that the pandas library provides. Make sure you import the pandas library before you run the function. So in the first step there I have imported the pandas library as pd and in the next step I create a variable called df and to this df variable I will apply the read csv function and to the read csv function I will paste the path of the file within a pair of single quotes or double quotes so that I can read it correctly and once you import the data or import the csv file this way you can then perform a bunch of analysis on it and another way to do or create a data frame is using the dictionary object so you already know that dictionary has key value pairs so the keys in dictionary will form the column names and the values will form the data part of your columns or features so you have features and data here and once you have a dictionary present all you have to do is you have to run the data frame function on it as shown in the slide here that is you create a variable called df and then you'll say apply the data frame function provided by the pandas library on the dict object that you created in the above line note here that the dot symbol in python is called the chaining symbol so anytime you want to attach any sort of a function or apply a bunch of functions in a single line you can just do dot and then followed by the function name in this case since the pandas library provides the data frame function you will say go to pandas library and then from there attach the data frame function and apply it to the object dict so anything that has to be applied with will be within a pair of parentheses that's why the dict object is within the parentheses here for those of you who are not so familiar with the chaining method in python so this is how it works so you basically chain a bunch of commands and any object on which this chaining function have to be applied will be within a pair of parentheses that's how it works so this is how you can either read from a file using the read csv function or a read excel function or you can create your own data frames through dictionaries as well very rarely you will be creating your own data frame because it's so hard to type so many values so basically most of the times you will actually be entering the values in a csv file itself and then importing it that's much easier than typing it as a dictionary in python but you should just know that is how you can create if you do have if you do encounter a dictionary if somebody gives you the data value as a dictionary you can easily convert it into a data frame using the data frame function so that will be useful in that scenario and finally pandas library also provides another data structure called a series data structure which is very similar to lists and numpy arrays the only difference between a series versus the arrays that you have previously encountered in other classes is that arrays can take only single type of values for example if your array has real values or numbers it can only have more numbers added to it you cannot add string values or categorical values etc whereas in a series you're not constrained a series can have multiple different data type object within it so that, that's the major advantage a series is nothing but a single column in a data frame so internally data frames are usually stored as a collection of series and pandas library mainly helps you deal with data frames and series you need to know a little bit about series because if you want to play around with just one single column then you will be dealing with series rather than the data frame because you just have one single column so whenever you're dealing with one column automatically pandas will convert your data frame to a series and we will look at series through a practical example as well to see how it actually looks and how we can create series in python so in the next lecture we will go through an example data set and apply a bunch of different uh, basic functions in python to see how we can analyze this data set so i'll see you all in the next lecture